this tutorial will be talking about 1d analysis in ACRAS. so let's get started so first of all we're going to create a new project for that go to file a uh, new project and the desired location so let me name it uh, analysis okay so it asks for the uh, unit so but right now I have SI units I'll select OK. If you want to change the unit, just go to Options and Unit System and select the one you require. Okay. The next thing I want to do is I go to JS Tool and open the RAS Mapper. So the RAS Mapper is the GIS system within the HECRAS. Okay. The first thing I want to do is set the projection. For the, for that, I I go to Project and set projection and here you select the projection file it's the one with the dot prz extension now this analysis is our our uh, uh, project file within the hegras this is not the one the another one this projection dot prz it is our file so i open it so you can see the uh, name of the uh, projection system that is utm for 44n okay and click on ok now what I want to do is create a terrain for that go to project and create new RAS terrain and click on this plus sign and select the dem file uh, of your location okay I'm selecting it and click on create okay let me close it now you can see the terrain file so if you have a very accurate uh, terrain file then you can easily distinguish the river feature and it would be uh, convenient to you know, directly digitize uh, but in this case I think it's quite difficult for me to distinguish the river right so what I do is to be more uh, accurate I want to see the Google imagery so for that let me go to uh, project and select add web imagery okay I want to select Google image sorry Google satellite and click on OK now check the map layers and you can see there you go here's our Google imagery and you can see the river over here so yes now we can digitize easily right okay so to start digitizing we have to define the geometry first so go to geometry right click on it and select add new geometry so give the name I'll give it a river and click on OK what I do is I want to edit the geometry click edit geometry so you can see many options right and right now I want to digitize the center line so while you are digitizing the center lines always go from the upstream to downstream right make sure you know the direction so right click on it okay it's already activated so I want to go through the center of the river not necessarily exact center but try to be uh, as near as possible okay okay you can zoom in and zoom out as per your convenience here a bifurcation is occurring here we'll avoid it okay since we are in the beginning stage okay like this you keep on following the center line of the river and when you are done double click on it okay so river name you give it so for it's river one okay reach one select okay the next thing what I do is uh, stop editing so it save edits yes now you want to uh, digitize the bank lines so go to bank lines edit geometry and start digitizing the bank same as the center lines okay not necessary to be exact banks but you try to distinguish between the bank lines and flood plane as far as possible okay
I'll do here. Okay. And when you finish, double click on it. Okay. Similarly, on the right hand side. Okay, there. This way. Okay. Again, right click on it, stop editing, save it. The next one is we need to uh, digitize the flow path, right? Okay. So for that, right click on the flow path, edit geometry, and give a, a possible, uh, you know, uh, the float plane of the river. Okay. So I'm doing it here, here. Okay. Similar in the other side. Yeah, don't double click. Okay, there you go. So let me stop it. Okay. The next thing we want to do is create the cross sections line. So for that, we need to go to this edit geometry. You can see the cross sections. Select it. Right click on it. Sorry. And let's create cross section line so for that you need to go from left to right always remember that while creating the cross section line you should start from left side of the river and move towards the right one so in our case it will be from here to here and always remember that the line should intersect all the lines center lines bank lines and flow path lines they should all be intersected by the cross section lines okay this way Okay. You can see the station ID are automatically generated. The same task could have been done from the geometric uh, editor. Okay, it's not necessary that it has to be done RAS mapper. If you feel convenient in geometric editor, you can do that from here. Okay, after you are done with it, right click on it, stop editing, and save. Yes. I want to save my RAS mapper file, so save it. Okay, let's close it. Now let's go to edit and geometric data. Now you can you know import the uh, geometric data here. So for that, go to file and open geometric data. Okay, so here is our river geometry. So select it and click on OK. You can see terrain file and the river center line the cross sections line okay the arrow is uh, pointing towards the flow direction okay i want to hide the background image for the moment so i go to here plot terrain and close okay it's easier now you can go to cross sections and you can see all the information here okay different river stations the elevation values right you can check for it okay now the next thing i want to do is uh, insert the mannings constant for that go to tables mannings and k values so i want to for the time being i want to set the value 0 0.035 now you can supply the value as per the site conditions and uh, i'll provide you the link for uh, the chow's mannings constant right you can go and access from the description box below okay click on okay so if you want to provide uh, the mannings and for uh, all the stations for example if you are sure about the uh, value of manning ends for this particular point then you can individually provide say for example 0 0.025 or something like that if you uh, find it so if you are sure about it then you can enter them accordingly otherwise the same value would be applicable okay so let's close it now i want to save the geometry okay since we are done with it the next step is we go to edit in steady flow data okay 
so we want to uh, enter the number of profiles for the let's say we'll take three and uh, we want to change the name of the profile so go to options and edit profile names let's say it's for uh, two year return period value the next one is 10 year and say the last one is for 50 year you can add as per the requirement okay and uh, I want to insert the value for example for two year return period it might be say 1000 for 10th year which might be 5000 and for 50 year it might be 8000 I'm just entering random values okay and I want to save it save flow data name flow and click on ok the next thing we want to do is run the steady flow analysis let's run it and uh, define the flow regime whether it is subcritical supercritical and mixed I want to go for subcritical and float plane mapping okay but before that before that we need to make sure that the boundary condition uh, has been applied so before computing let's go to edit std flow data there is a rich boundary condition so upstream will be applying normal depth okay probably 0 0.001 or something like that downstream it might be 0 0.0025 or something like that okay I'm just entering some random values, okay? I'm clicking OK. So file, save flow data. Now we can run it. So go to steady flow analysis and give some ID, for example, 11 and click in compute. Now the simulation has started, okay? Okay. So it's completed. Let me close it and go to JS tool, RAS mapper. And for the moment, let me uncheck the map layers, uncheck the terrain layer, geometry layer, and go to results. The depth for two years, okay. And you can see the changes, okay. You can see the value of the depth that's for 10 year return period, okay. 